Alright, Mad Gear Zone, Act 1, Dr. Eggman's Secret Base. So, here we are at the not-so-metropolis zone of this game, guys. Knowing that it's more like a not so trop metropolis zone, the metropolis zone badniks are also back, which includes, well, not the bubbles, they're from Marvel Garden, but they're useless, obviously, because they're always in this game. But here we are, there's the uh, shell crackers, and right up there, which I completely dodge, is the uh, slicers. From, uh, uh, yeah. Most of the enemies from Metropolis Zone are here. And you gotta watch out for them, because any move will, here will be your last. This first zone, um, uh, gimmick is Seam. I think, well, probably might go with all of them, but I'm not sure. Ow. Yeah, that's a nice design. And, uh... There's a lot of these, uh, bear belts, there's a lot of these escalators. Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, might as well just talk more about history of Sonic the Hedgehog 4, uh, while we were, um, while we're at it. Now, Sonic the Hedgehog 4, as you guys know, obviously, made by Dimps, the, uh, the, uh, perp, the same guy who made Sonic Pocket Adventure, the Sonic Advance series, and the Sonic Rush series. And every other handheld afterwards. Which includes Generations, Lost World, and, uh, Colors. But only the handheld versions, but not the console versions. But, um, they made, uh, Episode 4 of Sonic the Hedgehog. And, uh, no, not Episode 4, Sonic the Hedgehog, but Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 1. And, uh, this is made way back when, uh, when the Wii was still out, but the Wii U never came out yet. And this game was on WiiWare. This is the first time I ever bought the game, was on WiiWare. And, uh, it's also a downloadable only game. You don't, you don't get an actual cartridge from it. It's actually a downloadable only. And, uh, Sonic, and Episode 1, uh, you can get it on the WiiWare on your Nintendo Wii, the Xbox 360, which I'm playing on, which, which I'm playing right now, a PS3, uh, and Steam. There used to be a, uh, a iOS, uh, phone, uh, app version of the game, but as but as of now, as I'm uploading this video, um, that version is taken off the App Store. And, uh, yeah, like, when I first got my Xbox 360, I had plans of purchasing, uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, and I'm planning on less playing it, but then I realized... Then I actually forgot that Clement stated... Yeah, shout out. Oh my gosh, I keep failing in this next section. But he said that, um, apparently, uh, Scott Pokemon vs. The World, they just... The download for that game is no longer there, so... In other words, you just gotta get the game while it's hot. And it probably goes the same with, uh, WiiWare Sonic 4. And... And, uh... Yeah, you basically need to get the games while it's hot. Otherwise, you're not gonna do much. This section, you gotta run for it, or else you will uh, get crushed if you fail. Um, now this game, of course... Um, Episode 2 did not come out of WiiWare because due to memory limitations. It only came out of it only came out of of Xbox 360, PS4, and Steam. And uh I haven't played episode two yet as I'm recording or heck even uploading well actually I am I'm actually am playing it as I'm uploading it. But as I'm recording this I have not played episode two before. 
So, um, when it gets to, uh, day seven of this, of December, you're gonna see my first time experience happen. And, uh, it's gonna be a little bit crazy. Anyways, um, back to the gameplay. Um, Act 2, uh, its gimmick is the rotating gears. You gotta basically use the gears to reach a certain area. And, uh, and just don't get crushed by gears, too. They can also crush you, too, if you're not careful. There's this type of gear. You have to run in a certain direction to, uh, make your way to all the way to the right. But there's also some cases where it's also used to open a door somewhat. But anyways, uh, back to the, uh, dim subject on, uh, this game. Um, Sonic 4 Episode 2 was not released on WiiWare, so I cannot pre-order, so I cannot play it on my Wii, so I cannot play Episode Metal, because I want to play Episode Metal as well. So, as a punishment, like, I mean, like, I want, I was thinking, you know, should I record this game on my Wii, or should I record this game on my Xbox? My recently new Xbox. But if I, but if I do Episode 2 on my Xbox, I won't be able to play Episode Metal, because I didn't pre-order both Episode 1 and Episode 2 on the same console. So, I have to purchase this game twice, so I have two versions of this game right now. But either way, like, they both, they both have, the only difference what I know about for this game, the only difference I know about is Sonic is shinier in each version. And, uh, it's a minor detail, a little bit difficult to notice. But, um, Sonic Sprite does get a little bit lighter for each version you get. And I think the, uh, brightest version might be the PS3 version. But that's probably just my opinion. Ow. I need to- I need to do this fast so I can be able to run towards that door. And if you don't hurry enough... Then, uh... Then you're gonna miss your chance and you're not gonna get in. And boy, is it already hard as it is just to, uh... Be able to get to the door because, like... You get halt in place by a gear, of all things. There we go. Probably shouldn't jump. Whatever. Momentum for this game does not work very well, because usually in Sonic games, what you have to do is roll out a ball form, like, for example, like, slopes here. Might as well show this, since it's a really good example. Like, I hold down here, and although, yes, I do gain momentum, but as you can see from this slope here, I did not gain any more momentum. And the main problem about this is momentum-based platforming. You see, when you're rolling, you don't- you'll just stop. But if you just run normally, then you'll just make it just fine. Another problem I have is, after you roll off a slope in a ball form, you go into this huzzah pose. Which can leave you open in an attack if you're- if you don't perform a homing attack right away. And that pretty much left me to a few death hazards along the way. Here's a checkpoint down there, so... Yeah. 
gotta kill these slices, because I know they're the most annoying enemies in Metropolis Zone. Another thing I did not like about Sonic 4 is how they overkilled the dash panels and springs. You've been seeing it throughout the course of Episode 1, and you're gonna see a lot of it in Episode 2, I'm pretty sure. But, alright, alright, Act 3, Independent Doom. Um, this one, you need to keep moving, otherwise that wall behind you will kill you. So, you gotta keep moving, you can't stop. You gotta constantly move. Do not waste too much time. If you do waste too much time, then you're gonna get yourself hurt. Ow. I really need rings. Gosh, and I barely made that crusher. And these sequences could be a little bit scary. And I can agree with you there. Then we have these sections, which... You have to use your analog stick in order to get around. But basically what you must do... You must use these to get these. And after you get the next checkpoint, now the wall's chasing you again. So you gotta run. You gotta climb up this escalator, hit this button, and then run to the right. I forgot about that bubbles. And make that crusher. You don't wanna waste too much time in this level. go left, so we can move this gear to go all the way to the right. Ah, gosh darn it. Why did I try that? I have no idea. I think I can make some good ground off of it, but I guess not. I had to do a little bit of air dashing to get up here. Barely make that. As you can see, that section, like, I've been doing a lot of. I've been doing a lot of dash paneling and somewhat. And also, you gotta take your time with B. This is the neck, this is the other gimmick of this level. You gotta use these, uh, you have to, you have to rope, you have to tilt these things in order to get somewhere. You gotta air dash to uh, make these sections quick. This section, hit that switch. Run to the right. This here, you do not want to waste too much time. You want to fall down here really quick, like that, and then, end of level, like that. It's fast, gets you on the move, and that's what a Sonic game should be. Time for the boss of Mad Gear Zone. Defeat the real Dr. Eggman. Alright, so, this Eggman, of course, is using the element of the, uh, Metropolis Zone boss, as usual, with the, uh, with the, uh, with the balls everywhere. However, unlike the ones in Metropolis Zone, the balls that are actually using as a shield is actually 
are actually bombs. They're not actually... You can't... Unlike Metropolis Zone, where you actually have to break them in order to, uh... In order to get them back downwards. You actually need to destroy them. No, no, you actually have to avoid them, because if they do touch you... Then... Uh, then you actually do get hurt. They're like bombs. And I'm just trying to hit him. Should have one more hit left, and I'm just constantly, constantly getting hit. But, uh, yeah. You don't need to, uh, destroy all of his, uh, all of his orbs in order to, uh, kill him. But, yeah. But then it heads towards this little runner section. Where you're constantly running, just like in Sonic Advance 2. Except this time, what you're doing is you need to avoid the bomb balls, and you need to actually attack them at the right moment. And he'll drop three kinds. He'll do the regular ones, which is at normal speed. Ow. He'll also drop the faster ones. But he'll also drop a gigantic one. Like that. But, he only has a few hits left. It shouldn't be that hard to take him out. And that is it for Mad Gear Zone. Just watch out for the pattern, the version of balls you're actually, you're, he's actually throwing at you. And you'll be okay. Just dodge the regular ones. Just, just go underneath them. The faster ones. The blue faster ones. Once again, go underneath them. The big ones, again, also go underneath them. You know the drill. But here's a cutscene before we end this video. Of course.